about it and if you have questions. Um, a couple of things, just there have been a lot of questions about do we own the property yet and what the status of it is. Um, all three of these parcels have been owned by the same family trust for 40 years. And they will remain in that trust for the next 99 years. Our plan is not to purchase the property, which we'd really rather do, but the trust wants to remain involved with the property because they have a, a, a heritage here in, in the island. So um, it, it would be a land lease for 99 years. And just to, to clear that up, um, the last thing I'd like to say, um, there have been some online comments and even some questions in some of our meetings about developers. And I get that. Um, I think our popularity overall is somewhere below the people who make the robo calls and spam texts <laughs> and those kind of things that we get. And in many cases, that's well-deserved. Um, but I've got eight grandchildren and I am proud to tell them that I'm a developer. I work with a company that is, um, we, have, we only have 15 people. Um, we're, we're very dedicated, uh, we're creative. Uh, most of us have been together for a long period of time. Uh, we have a history of doing what we say we will do. And so Brian Wright, whom I'll introduce in just a second, is known already to many of you, is going to make a lot of representations tonight about things that we will do. And I just want to tell you that I know what those are. I have approved them all, and they are things that we will do. Um, and and that, that is my promise. So without anything further, uh, Brian Wright, who's head of this charrette, is with Town Planning and Urban Design Cooperative. And he is going to show this presentation to you and to me for the first time. <laughs> Thank you. Continuing on the tradition from the opening presentation, uh, Charles and the development team have not seen the presentation. I, in fact, I don't think they've actually seen the plan, believe it or not, but um, so we'll see. Uh, hopefully that doesn't, uh, he doesn't run out of the room as I'm talking. So um, anyway, uh, thank you so much for coming tonight. This is awesome. Uh, I am very excited to share with you. I'm also very nervous to share with you because um, we've gotten to know each other this week. Um, how many people are first timers for the, to the shred? Oh, that's great. Not too, too many, but some. Okay. So um, for those of you who are new to the, the process, um, as Charles said, I'm Brian and I am leading a team of a lot of um, awesome people, um, architects, engineers, planners, uh, stormwater specialists, transportation specialists as well. And um, for those in the back, I tend to forget to hold my microphone close. So just give me the signal when you need me to hold it up. Um, and so they are all in the back there. They're scattered throughout. Um, they're the ones who look really tired. Um, we have been working long into the night and, uh, and throughout this week. So. Um, please bear with us uh, as we get through this presentation, but I'm going to go through the presentation. I'm hopefully going to show you some things that um, look familiar to you, that sound familiar to you, um, hopefully some new things that are exciting to you as well, and, um, and then we will see where it goes. So um, I'll recap uh, quickly for those who are new. We started off by studying all of the previous plans and efforts that have come before us, uh, the comprehensive plan, uh, looking at the zoning, trying to understand that, um, looking at things like the vulnerability assessment uh, for the county, and uh, and then also doing our own analysis of the site. Now, when we started um, five days ago or so, uh, this was the extent of the work that we had done uh, besides reading those documents um, and coming ahead. We had, a, Charles and I had a meeting with some of the representatives from the uh, Tree Conservancy group and a few of the uh, adjacent homeowners associations. We all got together and they shared some thoughts with us. And um, now we're going to adjust the height uh, so you get a like stadium seating here. There we go. Oh, no, sorry. There we go. Whoa. This is our first time to do a presentation, so. <laughs> All right, 
All right. So, um, so anyway, this was the extent of what we had done trying to uh, do some analysis and understand the site because we knew from our initial trip here that the site was special. Um, it was important. Uh, it was special to all of you. Um, and so we really wanted to make sure that the, the land was um, really starting to inform us as we move forward. So uh, we figured out that there were wetlands around and we started to delineate those. Uh, we were, there's a tree survey that's been underway and we actually been getting information uh, throughout these last several days. So for those of you who are familiar with the site, who go out there, who walk by and you see all the little uh, tags on the trees, the white tags, um, and somebody said, oh yeah, I see all the trees you're gonna cut down. No, 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 those are just the trees that they've marked and surveyed so that we know where they are, uh, how big they are, what uh, species they are, so that we can work with them uh, and around them uh, as we move forward. So uh, those are not um, the uh, tag of death, those are toe tags, so uh, don't worry. Um, the count the property right now is uh, partially in the county and partially in the city. And so we've been studying that, understanding that um, all of the parcels are zoned commercial right now. Um, and so trying to understand what the implications of commercial development are on the site. The, uh, one of the things we learned through this process was that there was an ill-fated um, project that was presented to have a big public supermarket, I guess, on the site as well. Uh, that was not well received. Um, and so, uh, you know, just trying to learn some of the lessons uh, through that process and figure out what the, the community is looking for. Um, now, oh, I read the first and most important thing that you start every presentation here with. I know that if we ask you what you want, the answer is nothing. Right, we know for those are first timers like that. We've got that. Like we know that all things considered, no development uh, here or anywhere else on the island is the desired default. Yes. Um, the uh, the thing we're trying to work within is the fact that, as I just said, there is zoning on the property. It's been owned, um, you know, for forty some years uh, by you know, this group. Uh, and at some point will be developed unless it's bought uh, and put into conservation. And so we're assuming that um, that hasn't happened or isn't going to happen um, you know, now. And so assuming it's going to be developed, that those are the kind of underlying assumptions of why we're even here talking to you tonight. So um, we got it. No development is best um, for sure. Um, and when you know you go out there and walk in the site and, and meet the the critters and mosquitoes and uh, the rabbits with very small and round ears that I've not seen before. Um, oh man, I didn't even get this picture or video. I have this, it was hilarious. We were out there on the site and um, somebody walked up to me and, and uh, they're walking down the path. They said, oh, you guys are here to cut down all the trees and do some terrible development, right? And I said, I've heard us called that before, but that's not what we're here for. And so we you know, just chatted and, and got to know him. And, and so then as we're walking, I was like, oh, look at that. This is a really cute rabbit. And it's standing up, looking over the grass, just munching away. And I was like, oh, I got to get this. And, you know, I want to prove to everybody that we've been out there. I got to get a great picture and a video. And I'm squatting down, videoing the rabbit. And he's looking right at me, like totally unfazed. He didn't even flinch. And all of a sudden, he finishes his piece of grass. And he heads straight for me, right? Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> and so my video is like, oh. you know, he ends with that. Um, and I always think about the Monty Python skit where the rabbits are like, you know, so, um, so the rabbits apparently share the inner sentiment as well. They're like, get out of here, right? So, uh, so I get it, but it was awesome. Uh, we also saw um, raccoons, um, and that was great. Uh, and then, let's see, uh, oh, we saw, oh, the geese. We met the geese. Um, so, Minnesota. yeah, so the, the geese were great. They, uh, they did, the, you know, one of these kind of like get out, uh, like waking up. They didn't hiss. I didn't get, I guess I didn't get close enough. So I got the sound effects here. Uh, so anyway, for those who aren't familiar, if, if there are any of you, this is the site um, with the big star uh, on it. These are the three parcels. Here is the airport uh, here and Amelia Island Parkway and Bailey Road uh, here. And so we've been looking uh, at all of that here, zooming in. Here they are. Uh, these are the two uh, county parcels, and this is the one that's in the city. Uh, right now, um, it is uh, 
pretty well you know, covered with trees of various types. Um, we found that each of the three parcels actually has a different character uh, in it. And so when you go over here, there's actually not very much um, understory. And so we were thinking that maybe that was an, uh, there's a sheep out there. It was the uh, homage to the sheep uh, who had cleared for us uh, underneath in a very sensitive way. Is, is there a story to the sheep? We haven't learned that one yet. Okay. They're cute. Um, they don't move much, but, um, and then we have uh, over here more of our wetland areas uh, and it's very, very dense. Um, and, you know, it's like bushwhacking, taking your life into your hands as you go in here. Uh, and then up here, it's, uh, we actually got on the site this morning and uh, went out there and it's unique as well. And so that's kind of cool. Each of them is different. We would have thought they would have been just more of the same. So the, uh, and here is what you see when you, when you venture in up to the site. Um, if you, uh, you know, if you see this around, uh, we were concerned at first that it was mostly just um, pines. I mean, predominantly is pines, but we wouldn't have any really cool trees like this to, to really focus on a feature. Uh, but we've been excited as we've been finding more and more through our uh, tree surveying process that we've been getting out there and getting to, to know them. Uh, yeah, so here we are. This was, this was maybe before the rabbit. Um, so, <laughs> actually, this is right. I was going to get the rabbit at that point. Um, so, and here's one of those tags, right? These, are, these tags are okay. That means we know this tree is there and we know what we need to do. So uh, we've been looking around too at other developments and seeing you know, how they've done things, those who have been trying to be sensitive. But we've noticed that some developments haven't been sensitive at all. Um, and uh, I was surprised by that, um, that they've made it past you all um, in their process. But it's, uh, I can see um, when you see some of the developments why there is such concern. Um, if you assume that all development will be like that, I would be right here with you in the chair if I lived here. So um, we thought this was cool. We love history and studying the place. We you know, mentioned that the uh, property used to be a vegetable farm. We haven't found a, an aerial photograph of that yet. Um, but here it is in 1943. Lonely. Nobody's around. Uh, and then 1969. Uh, so uh, here we've got the airport now. And, some things going on, some neighbors coming in, and 1994. And look, all, if we've been here, then all of our friends that we've been meeting this week is the Al Demay, Al Demay, Al Demay, yeah, has been like so well represented. I think I've met every neighbor. We've had potlucks with them all. It's been great. Um, and so the, I thought that was neat. And it's also really uh, interesting for us to see the, the way the pond used to look um, in its more natural state. Uh, so that was that was interesting. Those were the days, right? So uh, we've had the charrette process as we've been talking about. This is great. And we hope those of you who have been here with us all week uh, have, have seen that this really is different than the way development is normally done. It's, you know, instead of being secretive and hidden behind closed doors, we've invited you all in and we hopefully will, by our tardiness tonight, will have proven that we didn't have things in our back pocket and plans all created when we showed up because we have made that assertion that when we came, we didn't have any plans or concepts as a blank piece of paper. And so we've been, that's why we're late because we're working on the plan. Um, so here we are, we've got some schedule, yes. Oh, okay. Um, so this was the first night um, we had the uh, opening presentation and we had these tables where people worked around the tables. Uh, all the citizens, look how happy he was, this is great. Um, so we tried to make sure we got a few people who were smiling, that was at the beginning too. So, um, and so working around tables, showing us you know, what they thought uh, could happen, what they loved, what needed improvement. And then most importantly for us, each group presented their work. Uh, and so we got to all hear what they were thinking. And it was cool because not everybody was thinking the same thing. Um, and I commented to the group, uh, I was really thankful uh, and proud that no one had said no development. Um, and so uh, I don't know if they just got caught up in the moment or what, but um, but people participated and, and you know, kind of went through the process of, well, if there's gonna be development, Let's talk about it and let's you know, give you our idea. So, uh, so that was really helpful. Um, here are some of the things we heard. Uh, the blue dots were um, for opportunities, red dots were things that needed improvement, green dots were things that people liked. 
Um, and, uh, and then here's some of the ideas uh, that were noted kind of uh, multiple times. Uh, so drainage in the water table uh, over here and how that impacts the neighbors was a, was a big concern. Uh, that's probably why we got to meet the neighbors so much. Um, uh, people talked about having some residential buffering between, and if you're going to do development here, have it be in keeping and in scale uh, with the development that's here. Um, the idea of having some neighborhood serving retail, um, sort of a village center, um, not a, a, a convenience store or strip mall or apparently not a Publix, um, or, you know, uh, the idea of having things like a coffee shop uh, that you could walk to if you live nearby, uh, or um, the idea of something uh, like uh, some office, uh, medical office, or some of those things. Um, the idea of having public trails, um, and then uh, the Amelia uh, Parkway, uh, keeping the line with trees and the buffer and, and those sorts of things as well. So we went through all of that, and, and there are many, many, many more comments. So we pulled them all off the maps, and we have this great list now that we're working with. Um, and that reminds me also uh, to say that I'm going to show you some stuff tonight, and I'm going to forget to tell you some of the really cool things that are included. So if some of your ideas aren't represented, it's not because they've been discarded. It just means I probably forgot to talk about it. So. Um, we'll get into that as we go. So we had a series of topical meetings with different um, you know, technical meetings, different topics. Uh, we talked about utilities and infrastructure, um, which we know is a big concern. Um, we talked about transportation. We talked about conservation and sustainability. We talked about um, community character and design. And uh, in those meetings, we actually had representatives from the city and the county. So when we were asking about you know, utility capacity and road capacity and all of these things, the actual people who know the answers to the questions were there. They could give um, the participants uh, the information that they were asking for, so they could teach us uh, as we go through the process. And we talked a lot about process, that what we're doing now this week is like bonus, right? Normally, as I said, uh, the first time you hear about a development is maybe if it's coming to the planning commission, you see some sort of a rezoning thing show up in the a sign on the side of the road, or you see it in the newspaper. Um, but all that we're doing this week, uh, all the input and the 60 or so hours worth of, you know, open studio time where people have been able to drop in and all the presentations and discussions and meetings are all in addition to that. And so as we go through this process, the project will still have to go through all of that. And so as we go and you think of new things or have ideas or you know, thoughts to share uh, or concerns even, you'll still be able to be you on know, the planning commission hearings, and the council meetings and, and all of that stuff. So don't worry, even though this is called the closing presentation, this obviously isn't the end. I'm sure that's, you all know, understand that. But um, here's some of the things we heard just as we were meeting with people and talking. So um, at the top of the list, I want to make sure that no development, right? Um, and so we heard that. The, uh, the other thing is reduce our impact. So low impact development is critical, um, that no site is a blank slate. So even though there's, you know, this looks like green, uh, you have to understand the site and treat it uh, kindly. Uh, remember that it's a barrier island. If we've heard that once, we've heard it a thousand times. This is not just uh, conservation, it's barrier island conservation concerns. And so learning more about that has been really uh, important for us as a group. Um, that tree conservancy uh, is key, but also the understory is important um, to hold this, uh, the soil in place and the different habitat for different types of animals. And so we're thinking about the idea of, of conservation in a, in a vertical regime, you know, from, from the floor, from the forest floor to the top of the trees, the canopy. Um, we heard no strip malls or big box stores. We heard um, yes to neighborhood serving commercial. Uh, we heard that workforce housing is scarce and it really needs to be addressed uh, in the community. Uh, we heard that, I love this one, be honest. Um, and that was an, that's an important one and I'm glad someone said it um, because for those who are new uh, to this group, um, I, we work really, really hard to, um, to try to undo um, all of the years of damage that have been done by other developers and planners in our process. So that even though it's hard to believe, we're actually here asking you what your thoughts are um, and that we might actually care what you tell us, um, that is what we are here for. And then one of the reasons why we have our process be so long and we embed ourselves in the community like this 
is so that we can get to know you and you can learn who we are. We can learn you. I know, you know, I've been in some of our, our new friends, you know, backyard looking at their native planting and their citrus trees. And I've learned people's names and, you know, learn all, all of these things are, are really helpful for me to understand. One, it makes me more sensitive to what's going on because it personalizes and humanizes the project, right? I get to start to think like a, a neighbor, like somebody who lives next to it because I live somewhere. And I know, you know, what it would mean to me if land was being developed. So the um, be honest is uh, is really important to us. So um, the River to Sea Trail is uh, is important and to be should be integrated into the project. Um, the a greater variety of uses within a walkable environment is needed. Dark skies lighting to protect, um, you know, from light pollution. Uh, great traditions and community events around here. Uh, that new development is not keeping with the existing character of the island or the city uh, or the county, uh, and that buffers are important. And I love this because um, one of the wonderful participants this week uh, brought us, um, brought me a, a gift, uh, the book, The Giving Tree. Uh, and when you look on the cover of the book, the little boy is actually standing here. And this is John, our sustainable stormwater specialist in the back of the room. Unbeknownst to him, this photo was taken and he's like the same thing as the little boy on the cover uh, of the tree. And so I thought that was really uh, a special picture. Oh, and this is one of our trees. This is one of the trees that is like in the site. Um, and we, uh, it's awesome. So we took all of those things um, that we've heard from you all and started to create some guiding principles for the development. And, and the word principle is not something that's often used in development. And the principle normally is make as much money as possible, right? And so, um, so here is uh, our guiding principles. Uh, so use low impact development strategies that preserve contiguous open space, natural habitats, and vegetation. The next one is employ sustainable stormwater and green infrastructure strategies. Uh, mm -hmm. Third one, keep Amelia Island character and scale. <laughs> Fourth one, provide neighborhood serving amenities. Uh, and then the fifth one, um, because um, Charles is in the room, um, I'll have to say, uh, also have a profitable project that is successful. Okay, so that's for you, Charles. Uh, I didn't make the list, but I figured you were wondering. So. Um, and then taking all of those sort of high level ideas and starting to zoom in and understand and look at, you know, like if we're going to be doing development on the site, how do we have the least impact possible? We have to understand what the rules and regulations are regarding you know, tree preservation, conservation, stormwater, all of those things. And then the specifics of the site, the depth of a water table, um, looking at you know, how high do we have to uh, get things up so that drainage occurs because the sites are very, very flat. Uh, and so we're trying to create these cross sections and, and the, you know, this is really all set up and intended to find ways to minimize uh, how much we have to disturb the land because we know that every time we have to fill a certain area or whatever, you're losing trees, right? And so trying to limit things to the you know, footprint of the building as close as you can. So we've come up with some strategies like, instead of uh, you know, pushing buildings uh, back from the street so much, you actually can come closer to the street, which means then, because we're already, you know, to put a street through, you're already having an impact. And so we're kind of keep our impact in the swath along the street. And then that allows you to behind and beside be more sensitive on, on the landscape. So those are some of the things we've been looking at this week moving forward. Uh, and this is kind of our big idea, the sponge neighborhood. The idea is that the land performs a function right now. And we want to make sure that we are keeping that functionality intact. And so if we're you know, cutting down all the trees, if we're paving over everything, all of a sudden the land can't function in the way that it's intended to and has for millennia. Um, and then we start creating problems. So that drainage that we heard about for our neighbors to the north gets worse, right? And so those are the, the things we're working about. So we have a concept where we're looking at preservation. So preserving trees and understory uh, and then protecting wetlands and expanding the buffers. Um, and then building and placemaking uh, being compact and light on the land. So whenever we're building um, you know, a road, looking at incorporating as much pervious pavement uh, or pavers in, in that road as possible, uh, parking areas as well, um, looking at, uh, this is actually kind of cool, I'm really excited about this because I thought when I suggested it that Charles would think it was a terrible idea, 
But uh, one of the things that I love about a lot of a lot of communities that have a lot of character and are really charming is some places you go, like you'll have a rear lane or something, and it's um, it's gravel or crushed shells or something. It's kind of like as you drive through, you hear it under your tires. But from this perspective, it is super pervious. So water just goes right through it and can go back into the ground where it needs to be rather than draining off somewhere else. So looking at even um, being able to do those types of things. And then maybe instead of doing sidewalks, I mentioned uh, in some of the other discussions that we worked on the comprehensive plan in, uh, in Pinehurst, North Carolina. So it's this great historic town, uh, village, and instead of sidewalks there, except for in the, in the village center where they have brick, I think, they have these uh, clay sand paths. And so it's like a stabilized kind of a, a sandy path that you can walk and it feels solid on your feet, but when it rains, it just goes right through. And once again, Charles is like, oh yeah, that's, that's, that doesn't sound too hard. Man, this is too good to be true. You guys have really, you know, brainwashed him. So this is great. Um, and then looking at um, uh, providing wildlife habitat, um, as I mentioned, all my new friends, the wildlife around here, um, and even the mosquitoes, right? They're part of the system, so we don't want to just wipe them all out. Um, so that's something that's important. The uh, incorporating bioretention uh, in the development, so uh, around buildings, so green gardens, um, capturing rainwater will be important as well. Uh, new trees, um, storm trees with proper soil volumes. Uh, so we know that even just planting trees is, you know, you still need to do some things. You can't just stick them in the ground and hope they do okay. Um, there are certain areas where we really want to encourage a growth. And so we're exploring some of these really cool techniques using these uh, soil cells with structural uh, stabilized soil in them. The trees can stay aerated and they can grow much faster because we know that these awesome live oaks take a long time to grow. That's one of the tricky parts about them and why if they're so sensitive, you don't want to cut them down. Um, the, uh, the other thing is designing storm intensity uh, into the project. So for climate change over time, um, we were actually looking this morning at the you know, frequency of hurricanes and stuff over as long as they've been recording it. And, you know, depending on when you moved here, um, it may seem like a lot uh, recently, but if you've been here for a while, it, it's kind of normal, uh, which is good to know, but uh, on the other hand, still something that we need to uh, consider and shouldn't take lightly. So looking at incorporating all of these different strategies in to the plan uh, with underground chambers and things, we've got stormwater uh, and uh, sponges, as we say, and wildlife habitat. So boardwalks and trails uh, going throughout that are crushed and, and permeable. Uh, the idea of, there we go. Some of this gets a little technical, so I'm not going to put you all to sleep, but using these different techniques of bioswales, bioretention, tree filter pits, uh, stormwater planters, forest pavement, and constructed wetlands. One of the things that we're looking at is um, in certain areas, there's already a pond, and so we're doing some pond stuff there, but areas where there are already wetlands, actually um, building new wetlands instead of just putting stuff in pipes, uh, putting water in pipes, uh, so that'll be a part of it. Uh, and then making sure that all of the design uh, or all of these features are designed so that they're artful and add to the beauty and the charm and the character. Because one of the things we want this place to be is we really want it to be a model for how to do sensitive development. If you're going to have to have development, then let's make it as awesome as it can be so much so that people come here to look and see how they should do development. And then everybody's like, man, too bad we didn't have this thing, you know, 30 years ago when a lot of development was happening so that everybody could follow the, follow the lead. So um, things like these, you know, green uh, alleyways, uh, stormwater mm -hmm. areas here, rain barrels on the buildings, all of that becomes important. Um, and it's, they look, it can look great. Uh, some of these features, as I said, um, here, like the Crane Island, they've done some really sensitive things. You can tell they're paying attention. They weren't just blowing and going. And to do that, you have to make sure that the day when you're out there, you know, figuring out where the sidewalks go, that you don't just leave, leave it to the contractors to figure it out. You know, you've got to be out there, you know, stay away from that tree. You don't even think about it, you know. So that's important as well. This is another one of the trees that we found uh, in the site, and you'll, you'll see that tree again later. So zooming out, thinking big picture, we're thinking about, we have this great arts trail here and it's great for people. Um, but when, it, when you start to look at the habitat, uh, wildlife habitat, 
it, you come through and uh, it's a little bit fragmented. Um, and so we're thinking about how can we be part of a, a, an arts trail for habitat for wildlife. Uh, we noticed that, you know, there's some gaps uh, in, in, the, in the system here, uh, and this could be an important part of that. So we thought that was kind of cool to explore. Um, the other thing we were looking at, it too, is uh, are some transportation considerations, like outside of our project, right? And so we're thinking, okay, you know, we heard about the traffic concerns and all the pressure that happens at these intersections, and, um, you know, Right now, there is a sort of a disconnected network of streets. A lot of these streets don't go through, and so all your traffic comes out in a few places and it clogs up. So one thing that caught our eye was, and this is, you know, we don't have control over this, but we're just throwing it out there for the community to consider, but the city has been really great in participating and listening and uh, to the things that we've been thinking. Uh, the idea of actually connecting the airport road through, it goes down here, it just ends. Um, and so imagine now all the people that are on Crane Island can come out here and go this way. You don't have to have everybody at this intersection or people who are, you know, in this uh, area uh, on our site could as well go out there. It gives the airport some more you know, visibility and, and all and uses that, that piece of infrastructure because you're so starved for it right now. Amelia Parkway takes, uh, you know, the burden uh, in a lot of cases. So again, just out of the box thinking we can't make that happen, but we can suggest it. Uh, and start to look at uh, holistically. We're thinking about trying to incorporate things like, uh, you know, make this a, a wildlife friendly neighborhood uh, and not just, you know, just for the backyard habitat, but bigger picture. You know, we've heard that the large canopy uh, is important Conti and contiguous canopy uh, is important as well. But looking at incorporating animal crossings underneath roads, this is a, my favorite salamander crossing under this road uh, in some community. I never knew there was such a thing, um, but uh, the, that's the kind of stuff that's inspiring to us, um, looking at how to incorporate, you know, joy and, and what does a park look like in the woodland area, since, you know, we're trying to conserve trees. Uh, here's a you know, kind of a hammock park, I thought was fun, and then these cool boardwalks going through very delicately. I mentioned dark skies before, um, that's something that is a no-brainer, uh, you know, why wouldn't you? It's easy to do, just get the right light fixtures and that you can accomplish those goals. We talked about working with nature and we've been looking for inspiration for developments that have been very sensitive. They preserved trees um, and worked with the natural flow of the water on the land and the and topography. We started talking about different types of housing. Uh, and these are some just some inspiration images that we've been looking at, trying to understand like what is architectural style um, that's you know appropriate around here. These are some really cool uh, kind of houses for detached single family. Um, here's some duplexes uh, that are kind of neat to look at how you might do duplexes. Um, these cottage courts, this is over at Amelia Park. Um, so these houses, these little cottages actually face onto this little uh, uh, park here that's vegetated with uh, sort of wildly. Uh, trying to figure out maybe some row houses uh, tying in there. Um, apartment houses, uh, so these are uh, multifamily buildings that are at the scale of a house. Um, so you can get some density but not feel like um, you've got a really big building. And then uh, getting into some mid-scale, so this is like a, a six-unit building here. Um, this, these are all connected in the back, you see, so that's actually a much bigger building than, than it appears on the street. Um, and then our commercial, our neighborhood commercial, this is our inspiration. Um, these kind of really intimate, um, you know, you don't want to try to be downtown during the neighborhood. Uh, you can't, you know, be that, I and mean, that's awesome. Uh, so how do you have something that's really charming and lots of character, um, but looking at it for inspiration, again, architecturally, some really cool stuff going on. Uh, and I, was, I thought this was really nice. Uh, this is a place called Habersham. Uh, and these are, you know, shops on the ground floor, a couple of restaurants and some uh, uh, residential above or offices above. I thought that was nice. Uh, and then this was the one place that um, you all said you actually liked. Uh, I said, what department do you like? And I said, oh, we like Palmetto Walk. Uh, I said, oh, okay, well, we've got to see that. So, uh, and I understand it's it's really nice and fits in and fits in the landscape, but also fits in architecturally. So, getting into the planning concepts. So we started off by trying to understand, um, you know, how much uh, stormwater we had to deal with, what the tree preservation requirements were, where we might incorporate some development areas um, based on what the um, we heard from the community. Uh, we we're looking at needing to expand, uh, possibly expand the pond 
Um, and as we have here, it says artfully uh, adding some wetlands. These are the existing wetlands. And so making a, a real a wetland system instead of just uh, disconnected wetlands, which is actually better for the wildlife. So we started to sketch. This was an initial concept. Um, here you see Amelia Parkway. Uh, here is Bailey Road in the roundabout, uh, our neighborhood commercial area, looking at some smaller scale multifamily up there. Um, our big idea was to actually take most of the density and stick it back here in the back corner. Um, and the idea would be to, even though most of the time the developer wouldn't do this, actually have structured parking so that you don't have to have parking all over the place. And so have structured parking there and then wrap that build that uh, parking structure with building um, so that you don't see the parking, having the big generous buffer along Bailey Road, um, respecting the wetlands, adding to that uh, network, uh, and then moving down the parkway, keeping the buffer in place. Uh, and here you can see all of our little blue fingers. So we're trying to create a network for our stormwater. Um, and we looked at this and this was kind of early on um, the first idea and it, it kind of felt like a lot. Um, and so thinking like, well, that's probably not what we're hearing that you know you all want. Um, but it gave us an idea. We could start crunching some numbers at that point. We could start looking at it. We could say, okay, well, if we're you know measuring and doing stormwater takeoffs and stuff, then that's you know that's that's a benchmark for us. Uh, and so so then we revised that plan, and this is where we stand today. So what you see is the eight acre parcel. We've left it fully in conservation. So we've not developed at all uh, over there. Um, the uh, here, uh, this is across from the entrance to the senior center. Um, here we've done an entrance in and we've done some light uh, development here coming in. Uh, a few of these sort of smaller scale multifamily buildings, some single family homes, some duplexes mixed in. Um, uh, and then sort of a similar pattern up here. But most importantly, what you'll see is the, um, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll jump ahead. So here's the big guy, right? It's still over there, but we did some really cool things because I felt like, you know, you guys said, oh, we looked on Bristol's webpage, we see what they do. And I said, well, that's not, that's not, that's not for this place, right? But, what we realize is if we use some of the tools in their toolbox, the things that they know how to do to be a little bit more dense um, and pull that density over and deal with that parking in the way that we are, we can solve some problems. And so then I challenged the development team and the architects to come up with something different that doesn't feel like that. It doesn't look like a big urban downtown kind of a, a thing. So we'll show you some more about that in a second. So that's down here, the big buffer. Um, the idea is that um, this piece right here is kind of where the, most of the density is. And then we have these wings that pop out that are closer to the street that drop down. And they're like two stories. And so they're like residential scale, right? Uh, and that there's one, two, three of those. And within each of these little um, courtyards that's created, this is a big stormwater area. And so we plant, and uh, I mentioned in some of the earlier presentations where we're looking at doing is whenever we have to uh, take down, uh, you know, any of these pine trees or any of that stuff, when we plant back to plant back with the actual, you know, canopy of what was supposed to be here on the barrier island, not what got planted after the vegetable farm stopped being here. And so looking at, you know, true, you know, very sensitive and thoughtful reforestation uh, as we go through this wetland or the uh, stormwater process as well. Um, here, this is our, our neighborhood center area. So we have some mixed use uh, at the intersection here, uh, the roundabout. Uh, on, uh, both sides were showing it. We, you know, if there's a market for that, uh, like a, if the market can support it, then great. Um, but these could also be um, some really cool uh, sort of village scale um, multifamily uh, in this area. Uh, and then what we've done up here is um, we had this much, much closer. Uh, and because of all of our friends that we've met, um, we actually uh, have pushed this back. Uh, and so I think we've got like a uh, hundred foot buffer maybe. Uh, and then these buildings are like a hundred and, uh, how's this work? Uh, lost track. This building is 150 feet back with a big buffer that's nearly a hundred feet here. And 
and this one's back, I think, a total of 100. And then there's a little uh, little street in front of it here so that the buildings are actually set back farther. But the thing that I felt really good about was when we were back there um, talking to the neighbors, we were looking at the, um, at the buffer and I said, well, you know, really when you're worried about your buffer, it's not so much the trees that you need to be protecting, it's the understory. Because the trees are kind of sparse, uh, but that understory is like super, super thick. And so what we're looking at here is just leaving that uh, in its uh, wild uh, state. Now, uh, the idea is that this is becomes a gateway. You know, we've heard that, you know, people come, you know, onto the island here. And so the parkway is seen uh, as this, um, you know, sort of entryway. And so having you actually have some really cool, really special, and I don't mean like regular old, you know, little commercial building or whatever, like this is really cool. And you'll see when I'm talking about it in a minute. Um, that says like you have you have arrived so that somebody's like oh well what is what's going on here you know we've got downtown uh, and then there's old town it's not just in downtown so maybe this was some settlement you know back in the day um, when and something special was happening here the idea would be too that we would actually um, hopefully be able to slow the um, the speed limit right now it's like 45 and I'm sure people will go faster than that because it's so wide and this tree and the trees are so wide and we're thinking about um, what we call a road diet um, and so narrowing it up actually a little bit um, and keeping the buffer but hopefully being able to have trees even closer than they are right now like on some of the great roads that you love where the trees can canopy over the street they're so far back right now, you can't even do that, you know? And so thinking about there are some ways to incorporate that. And the road, the character of the road changes as you go. So down here at where we've got the conservation area, it is, um, you know, more, much more natural. As you move in, you start to have it be a little bit more, you know, kind of you can see some buildings peeking through. And then up here in sort of the, the Hamlet Center, Village Center area, it's, you know, feels very different and maybe even, you know, some on street parking there, a little median, uh, you know, wide sidewalks throughout, uh, adding the bike lanes in that they've been talking about. So really thinking about how do you transform this and actually make it even better than it is today. And so we've been studying what are these grand roads that you have and what are the features of those roads that you love. Um, one of the most important things about this is, and I'll go back to it, but I didn't want to spend all my time talking about it, like I'm trying to blind you with the greenery, but the this area here in conservation, you start to see a system of trails through here. There's a wetland, um, the idea of, of you know, saving that and featuring it, uh, having the trails come through. And so this actually can feature function as a standalone park itself. It's eight acres. Like you, it takes you a minute to walk around trails in eight, eight acres. Now, it's not good enough though just, just to have it here because as I said, we want this to be a destination for, I've always said, what's in it for you guys? Like, why do you, if you're gonna have development, you know, why would you even want it? And so we wanna make sure that it ties in to the other neighborhoods, all the surrounding areas. So we have these access points, little trailheads here. Uh, here's where the sheep are. So we call the shepherd's trail. Um, but what you'll see is as we've learned that contiguous habitat is important. And so as you come across the street, this is also in preservation with trails, comes through our giant wetland. So this is all left in open space without development. We've got our new wetlands that we've built to be part of the system or part, part of that. We've worked, there's actually one of our trees that I showed you um, in the pictures. That's that tree right there. Uh, so we've sort of split the road around it. Um, you go here, uh, so here's more of the uh, bigger wetland area, or, or smaller scattered wetlands, and then coming across up to here. So now you have this continuous green blue, along with the buffers around all the edges, and you'll see there's these trails that connect in all the way around, so around the pond, we have a bridge over our little pond extension area here. Um, and so uh, here, because we had the pond existing, we thought we could expand that to deal with some stormwater and to not have to put ponds down here, where it was a more wetland, more sensitive area. So, um, so that was the strategy there. But then you'll always see that even between the houses, we've spaced them so that the trees can you know, be growing between them. And that's some of the, the things that you love about these places, not just trees in general, it's like trees peeking through, trees peeking up from behind. 
and be able to intentionally create those moments. Um, we're looking at also uh, here, you start to see these areas in the rear where you would have parking or some of those multifamily, some of the houses. Uh, and now be, remember I said that gravel or crushed shell uh, back there. Uh, and so uh, our sidewalks that are the sand paths and trails until you get into the center, like when you're there and you're going to go grab a cup of coffee or maybe go to a, a you know, cafe or something, or maybe the neighborhood market people talk about, like they don't want a Publix, but if we had a small, cool market uh, that we could walk to and get a few things, that would be great. You probably don't want to be walking on the sand path for that. So this is a little bit more, you know, refined in this area. The, um, let's see. Yeah, there's so much I could go on. Oh, here's a cool thing. Uh, and you'll actually see a view of this in a minute. See these little houses here? Remember I showed you that um, uh, Amelia Island cottage courts where they face in on that little green space? So we're like, oh, that'd be really cool. So that's what that is uh, here. They're facing in on it. And as we go up, they spread out and kind of give access to the pond again. Um, and then these buildings are facing in onto this. So all the, the uh, green spaces and open spaces, the buildings face them. They don't back up to them. So that you have, you know, sort of natural safety people watching out. They're sitting on their porch with their stoop looking out. Uh, hey, how's it going? And, you know, so there's so much. There's so much in here. I just, I'm excited about it. I'm, like I said, I'm scared about it, but I'm also excited. Um, but, you know, I think you can start to see we've been really, really working hard uh, to try to, you know, just don't even touch uh, a lot of the, the land. And this is uh, just a really rough sort of open space diagram. I didn't even give myself credit for this buffer and this, you know, so, uh, so there's more, more to it actually, but just to help that pop out so you can understand like where the development areas are uh, and where the, the green areas are. So that's how that works. So uh, our, our artist JJ has been drawing these drawings and these are actually, like I can show you on the plan where these moments are. This isn't just like some sort of eye candy theoretical thing. Um, and so uh, here you can see there's a, a road going along here. Here's the wetland area. Um, here is a uh, sort of a medium scale multifamily uh, building here uh, so with some single family in the distance, uh, bikers and walkers on the trail system and understory here. Um, so we have our attack rabbits uh, home. Um, this, this is really cool, okay? This is our, this is the, the, the big guy. This is the huge, you know, where we got all of our density in around that parking structure. This is the view going down Bailey Road, right? We have, we have actually not done ourselves any favors because really the view down Bailey Road would be trees, not just three trees, but the buffer that's like 50 or 60 feet, whatever, however wide it is. Um, but what you can see behind here, here it is. One, two, three, four stories. That's four stories, okay? To clarify, four stories. Drops down to two stories here. And this is that cool stormwater. There's courtyards that are in here. But you notice that the ground floor units have their own little porch and these steps that come out to it. So it feels like a single family house, right? And so this is hidden trees here. Uh, and again, so... I was like, ah, you know, they don't, they don't care about this, but this, I was so excited. I couldn't help but show it. It's really, the architects just blew me away. So here's a view, just looking down uh, one of our uh, neighborhood streets. When you come in, uh, if you turn right uh, from the main, the middle entrance road, um, these are houses and see, you, you see how we, I mentioned before, we pulled them up closer to the street so that we didn't disturb as much. Uh, and then the, this is the view into the big wetland area that we preserved. And so we have our little trailhead markers here. Um, and you see our crushed, our sand path. Uh, and our one of the things that we're going to, uh, I've got the okay to, to, um, to do, uh, to, to share with you is that we want to do all, um, all native and indigenous plants. Um, so, you know, not having a bunch of, you know, palm trees and, you know, birds of paradise and all that stuff, I mean, they've got their place. Um, but you know what also isn't indigenous? Lawn, grass, right? So we're not going to hear lawn mowers uh, and we're not going to be, you know, I'm going to fertilize all this. And so um, I told, uh, I told Charles, oh, we're going to save you a ton of money on landscape maintenance, right? Because it just does its thing and it looks awesome. Uh, so uh, they're, 
we're willing to, to go for that. So um, I'm really excited about that. Um, and here, even, you know, even the, the Lone Pines, you know, they have their place, you know, we, we think that we'll you know, try to incorporate them as well, um, not just uh, celebrating the Oaks for sure. Um, this is our, that view I mentioned before, a little cottage court uh, that we were inspired by Amelia Park. Here's the view down that cottage court. Uh, and so these are the sort of smaller cottages um, with their front porches facing out. Um, this is, there's the lake uh, up there. You can see it off in the distance. That's what that blue is. Um, and the, uh, you know, some stormwater functionality can happen in here. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's great. Here is the bird's eye view uh, at the intersection of Amelia Parkway and Bailey Road. Here is the roundabout. Um, we have proposed instead of a palm tree in there, maybe a live oak, um, be kind of a neat uh, and charming feature. Um, but what you see is our little neighborhood center here with neighborhood serving commercial, um, you know, some outdoor dining, the sidewalks uh, turn into boardwalks. And here's this big stormwater feature that you're kind of looking out over the wetland, even when you're in the, the village center, um, you know, some people uh, could live above, you could have some offices above, the parking's hidden in the rear. Um, and uh, here's a, a multifamily building there. Uh, you see the on-street parking. Um, and I don't know if any of you recognize what this is. Geese. There's our geese, <laughs> right? Our traffic calming. Um, we wanted to make sure we had our, our geese crossing still. Um, but uh, I told JJ, I said, you gotta put the geese in. Oh, I'm sorry, Bailey here. So the airport's down this way, and this is the no, best. Be no, no, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so Bailey, so we've turned right, and so this is as if you're coming in, uh, and you come here. Um, if you turn right here, this is the the old um, maintenance yard for the city or county, whatever. Um, uh, Crane Island. You enter down there come down here, turn right. I'll go back to the plan and I'll show you. So, um, but the idea is to have it be, and here again, we didn't do ourselves any favor. We kind of like, we had to see the building. So we didn't put in all the trees that we really imagined would be here. Um, but uh, you get the idea coming out here, walking from your neighborhoods, gathering uh, and, and hanging out. Um, this is a view from um, uh, the first street in, uh, it's kind of the back side of the, of, the, of the block I was just showing you. This might kind of be like our little uh, main street, if you will, uh, very intimate. Um, we have um, uh, this, you see here, this is a, a cool coffee shop we've incorporated. Um, we've been talking to, uh, if you know Southern Grounds, we're like trying to get them like, hey, you should come here. Um, it's awesome. And then uh, we heard there's some people might be interested in Oyster Bar. I don't know if you can read what that says. It says locals Oyster Bar. Uh, so that's for all of you. Um, I was one that's got to have a shirt that says I'm from around here. You know? uh, but you get the idea, though, again. Um, oh, oh, do you remember the tree I showed you before? And I said, you'll see that tree again. We literally this is the tree. We made JJ draw it in the tree. That is where the tree is. So we were we were drawing. We had this little road drawn. And then Claire was like, hey, 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 hold on. We've you've got the road going through the tree. Uh, I think it's like a 40 inch tree, right? You've got a road going through the tree. And so we said, oh shoot. And so this road comes straight in and you're heading right down and you see the tree and then you go like this and you go around the tree. Uh, and then at the end, this is where the, um, uh, the bigger multifamily building is down there. Uh, but we created all these little intimate spaces throughout. You have your outdoor dining, you're hanging out, eating at locals, uh, doing your thing. And, um, I just, how special is that? So here are the stats. Everybody pull out your cell phones quick. <laughs> See? <laughs> All right. So total existing, uh, total lot area, 46.4 acres. Existing wetlands, 30, uh, 3.1 acres. The plan right now has 48% open space with 37% of it in conservation. And so we're trying to figure out what we want to be like very specific about how we're, we're doing that and you know, what does that mean? Uh, but then most importantly, and I'm so mad that it's cut off down here, it says 10% workforce housing committed in the PUD uh, and workforce as defined by HUD as 80% of the area median income. 
Um, and so not any of this like, oh yeah, this is workforce, it's made and then like, ah, oh, never mind, we changed our mind. Uh, and so the PUD would actually incorporate that as a as a requirement. Um, so there's no like wiggle room, no getting around it. Uh, we ver verified with the city that we can do that. Um, so all those commitments that you all have been looking for, um, that is uh, kind of where we're at. So I have a question. One second, I've got the most important thing to say. <laughs> Not as important as what you're going to say, but something that we've been asked all week long. Okay. How many units? How many units? Okay. I would not leave here without saying how many units. So right now, with all the bells and whistles and all of the things that we've been trying to incorporate, I figured that I probably needed to help the development company still come out on the upside of this. So right now, the plan as it's drawn reflects about 380 units, which is a lot of units. I know, I know, right? We couldn't decide if we wanted to lead with that or to finish with that because it's like, you know, um, it's hard, right? So as we go through this process, trying to understand sharpening pencils, trying to refine things, under, this is five days worth of work. Um, we keep hearing um, uh, a number of units that, you know, 400 some number of units. I think one of the things that we noted too was I think the highest current residential zoning that you could possibly get in the city lets you do about 10 units to the acre. Um, and so I think we're at like eight point something. So he didn't want to, I mean, I know somebody who didn't want to ask for too much, um, but um, that's kind of where it, it falls right now. So um, we'll see what happens. Uh, what? Oh, yes. Uh, thank you. That's a great question, too. So knowing that it's adding a lot of more units than you'd want because you want zero, um, the, uh, the idea is to try to minimize some of the impacts we've heard about, right? So we've heard about, um, you know, if, uh, what are the impacts going to be on, on traffic or the impacts going to be on this or that? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. My bad. Um, that's my strategy. Anyway. Um, so what we wanted to do was to start to define the mix of units to be geared towards single people, right? So people, so you have less cars. Um, so uh, looking at uh, how many, how many one bedroom, what percentage roughly we're thinking like? The, the in the, in the two multifamily buildings, about close to 50% one bedroom. Right. So. So in that way, right? So we're gonna hopefully limit the number of cars um, that we're having, and then also limit the number of kids um, that we're having. The, um, the other thing we didn't talk about is, uh, I think the idea at this point is that the, you know, even single family houses and all of that stuff, all the residential component would be uh, for rent, uh, for rent. So that's uh, one of the things we're thinking about. Um, but we're going to be, you know, refining that, um, the mix uh, of, of units, uh, the mix of products, uh, the different types of housing as well, and the mix of uh, commercial, uh, the mixed use uh, as we go on. And, you know, one of the things we've got to do is um, there are a couple of places in the plan where we found those moments with the tree and, oh, shoot, we've clearly taken out this important tree. Uh, and so we're going to overlay, because uh, we had to work so quickly get all this done. We're going to overlay the trees and get more sensitive and refine our roads around them even more. Um, but as we go, uh, I think that hopefully, even though I'm sure, you know, many of you are disappointed by that number, that you see your yourself and your ideas reflected here as best could possibly be given the, you know, situation. So uh, I'm going to open it up for questions and at my own peril. One second. I can count it up. It's on here, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head. I'll have to get back to you on it. But it's, uh, but tell me, uh, how about this? I'll ask you this. So I'll make sure when I'm thinking through it, I understand. What is the ideal mix or what's the concern? Yeah, yeah, no. 
what like so what's the concern if it's this many of this or this many of that well, one thing's better than another yeah so like i showed on the plan it's color color coded so all of the yellow are single family detached homes the orange are duplexes these red are the uh, smaller scale multifamily. Um, this, the darker, it's hard to tell the difference. This is sort of the uh, mixed use area. Uh, and then the big peach one is the, the big one. So, what? Yes. If I run around the county, I don't go to the county council myself uh, by the buildings that we've been working to get this finished. But I do know this. The big building in the bottom left is 240 apartments. You know, know it you know, has a scale. And that is um, approximately 50% one bedroom, 40% uh, two bedrooms, 10% three bedrooms. The reason we didn't do more three bedrooms is because the duplexes and the townhomes and single family homes provide the opportunity for larger. <coughs> You know, and then there's one other building that's 36 units, three stories, I believe. Those are the only two really mid scale or large scale multifamily buildings. Everything else is that small scale. Okay, hold on. I'm terrible about this. Can one of my team members help me and just like look at, make sure I don't overlook people for too long? So. I'm gonna start at the back and work my way up. Oh, sorry, you had a question a long time ago and I interrupted you. I'm so sorry. Yes, you have. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna stand up. Please. I'm Mary Phillips and I'm from Virginia Beach. Now, some of you in this room know me that it's sad for me. Not only the emotional, that I don't know a lot of you in here, but I'm from here, okay? This is my first night getting to come, but this is beautiful. Y'all have done a wonderful job. Okay, I will say that. This reminds me of Disney World. Okay, the colors and stuff like that. This, you know, all this color. I tell it like it is. You tell me that this is going to be single family homes and stuff. Okay, I work for the school board. Teachers, they need to employ the, employ the teachers. I'm not a teacher. They can't afford this stuff. The city got screwed, bluntly. Okay, when they said they were going to put their apartments on 14th Street. People can't afford that junk, but they've got to come here. So where are they going to live? Off the island and have to commute and with the gas prices? I'm against all of this. It's beautiful, but I'm totally against it. I want this island preserved. Everybody's moving here because they love Fernandina. They love our downtown area and they love the waterfront. Okay? It's beautiful. We want it left alone. You loved it when you came here. Leave it alone, bluntly. I just, and the, and the tree canopy needs to be protected out there. I can't stress it enough. I'm angry. I see this stuff on Facebook. I mean, all these people come here with all this money. Oh, yeah, you're going to go out there and have a good time. I'm not going to be able to go out there and have a good time, not on the salary that I that I make. Okay? Y'all, I, 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 who's paying y'all to do all this? Has anybody asked that question? No, the development. Okay. Where you who asked y'all to come in here and do this? Who asked you to get this into this property? I'm trying to comprehend it. The person that owns the property? So they want the development. Yes, ma'am. If it's a family that's owned the land for 40 years and that uh, well, I guess they need money now, maybe. Well, they they're they're members of the later generations that depend on the income from this and um, they've been paying taxes on this for four years with no income coming in and have asked that it be developed. We went through a, a pretty intense competition uh, in order to be selected for this. I, I mentioned at the beginning that family will continue to own this property. And one of the reasons that we have everything in here for rent is the land, we are not buying the land here. We're leasing it. Yeah, so. But I appreciate what y'all have done. Honest to God, I do. But y'all, the people who aren't from here, who have moved here, please start caring about those of us who are from here 
that are trying to save what we have for our children and our grandchildren. I want my child and his children to enjoy what I have enjoyed all my life. And it's all we get is just push, push, push because people have money, money, money. I don't have money to fight this stuff. I have a voice, and that's why I try to speak up every time I can. And I'm imploring for the people who have bought nice homes. Y'all got nice homes. I live downtown, and I have a nice little cottage downtown. But I was fortunate when I got that house. I'm not going to tell how much my pay for it and how much now, but it's, it's quadrupled, which I'll never sell it. But the point is, please help us save it, Donald. Please help us save it. Thank you. I appreciate it. I think it's about six hundred and sixty five is the number I Who else? Who? Go ahead. No, he's he's the boss. <laughs> oh, now I am. Okay, yes, ma'am. I lived on family boats for fifty years. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah, so I think I Yeah, we've heard about that this week for sure. Yeah, it takes a while. So, yeah, so as I said, one of the, I didn't say it actually, as I said earlier in other presentations, the strategy is, part of the strategy is, one, you're creating a, a place that's walkable. Two, you're connect, creating a place that's connected, right? So right now, no. oh, yeah, yeah sure, 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 yeah. You don't know. Yeah, they, I mean, as far as the hurricane evacuation goes and all that. When you leave, they screw you guys. You're stuck right now. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't know the uh, that I have the the sufficient answer for that. It's you know, as we look at the project and development, as with all of the other like the 
non-emergency traffic issues, you've got to look at all of that. And so we'll go through the process to make sure we meet all the requirements that are necessary. So I don't have a, well, here's, here's the way you go. Can I say one more thing? Sure. Okay. Marsh, was it Marsh Pope, those apartments there across from, from the, uh, the dunes or whatever they call them now that they built them. When they built that, that complex there, I lived in those apartments. They, they put a left turn, okay? Off of eight, so we come down, they made a left turn and they, they didn't give us any view. I had to call the, the road department and get an engineer after it was done to come and sit at the entrance of Marsh Road yeah. and see, oh yeah, you can't see the cars coming. You have to pull out all the way into the middle of the road to see that there's a car coming 40 miles an hour from the, you know, from 8th Street. Right. So I don't have any faith in the county or their engineering or any of them. I'm sorry, but that's, I see it in my own eyes. I know what they are. I know what they're doing. And I don't, I don't trust it. Okay, so I still vote no. You know how I, yes. that's how I came Thank in on I'm still saying it now. I I'm in that. Sorry, in the back, I keep skipping here. Yes. Yes. We're thinking about it. We're, you know, as far as just talking, because right now the, the county has this uh, context sensitive, the state has context sensitive thoroughfare design, that's the way it works. Um, and, it, you know, the road changes character as it moves. So if this is a, a neighborhood center, Per se, then it would, you know, the character would change in that regard. But that's something that we're just, you know, kind of brainstorming on. So, yes. Oh, wait, sorry. You then back to you. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yep. So hold on to her and then to you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I mean, it, it may be possible, um, I, you know, not for Bristol, I don't think, but somebody else may be able to figure out how to pay the, the price, you know, for the land and be able to do something like that and small, but so far what we've seen is the, you know, Publix, you know, is the, is the solution um, for the previous group, so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why they weren't looking at doing that because um, that is a good point. So, um, yes, ma'am. No, I'm up to you. Yes, you. I, I just want to wrap my head around the apartments. You said town homes. Yes. Um, and then you said that the apartments are going to be simple. No, all of it's rental. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 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 Yes. Ok
I live that all the time. And uh, the world has changed uh, fairly dramatically, especially since the time I was in the army. Um, and there's a, a, a very large segment of the population that wants to win, not because they don't belong in the community and want to be embedded in the community, because they choose that because they either can't qualify for a mortgage, they don't want to have a mortgage, um, they live a, a job that requires them to transfer periodically, and they don't want to be burdened as they were in the financial crisis in the house they can't sell and can't keep the job in the community they're in. You know, they're just looking for a simpler lifestyle have somebody else do all the yard maintenance and house maintenance and all that what would come with this um, it would be completely dangerous free even if you're in a single family zone um, the other reason i mentioned before why we do that is we are borrowing property for 99 years if you will we're leasing the property and it's much more difficult to sell too simple on a, on a ground lease but it's a practical reason as well but Getting back to your question for single family homes, mm -hmm. um, we, we're looking for the single family homes to be somewhere in the 1600 to 2300 square foot range. So, in the 1600 square foot range, that's probably where we start around 2200, 2300 a month. 10% medium ones, the ones for the workforce. Yep. What would they, you know, school teachers, I guess we're talking. School teachers, firefighters, that kind of thing. Yeah. What what would they rent for? Charles, do you know the he was asking about the workforce ones? What's the 80% of the median income? Yeah, here's here's what I remember for sure is that um 80% of area median income a one person household would um, be qualified if they earn forty one thousand dollars a year. And then we would set our rent based on that $41,000 in income. A family of four would make, I think it's $54,000 who qualified for that. So that's a 10% set, set aside. Um, so imagine the kind of rent we're talking about, it's a fairly significant amount of money. And, and the rents that we're charging kind of reflect that 10% set aside. Uh, one of the hard things about workforce housing or any kind of affordable housing is um, it's, it's nearly impossible to do without a government incentive or some sort of grant or something like that. Uh, we just thought, based on everything we heard here, it was worth doing that to at least provide some solution. It's not a great one. It's not the answer to the whole community, but it's a set aside for units that would allow people in those income ranges. Great question. What this will not be is short term rentals. We do not do, we don't have a single community where we have ever done a short term rental. So we do have uh, guest units that a resident and have a family set in them. That's a little bit different um, But uh, these would be leases, usually they're 12 months plus or minus leases. We, because we try to build community, we provide a lot of amenities and we try to do a lot of things to build community. So most of our residents stay beyond that first year, but that's the way these would be structured. It's typically about one year. Yes, sir. A question about you know, earlier uh, sites like this, there were quadrants. Uh, um, upper left quadrant is one of the data that we're looking at housing. Do you want to speak there? I know they have some good ones. Yeah, so. Uh, so you, you have an overall mixture, which I think is not the thing that goes to the south. Is that much less dense? Yeah, so up there, I have a terrible memory, and especially for numbers, but if my memory serves, um, the, I think there's like 60 units total 
in that area, and they're two stories, I think, two, except for along the uh, Amelia Parkway. Um, Yeah, yeah. So these, and here's something we thought to do. Just for what it's worth, you guys may not like it. Oh, I'm sorry. Something we thought to do that you all may not prefer, but um, after having gone out there and walked down and seen that actually the back of the houses are are nice looking. Like most of the time, when you see the back of houses, you're like, I'm gonna turn the back to them, but. Also, because the bike trail is there and we were set far back, I thought that it would be nice if the front of these units faced that way. Uh, and so this is the front of them here with you know porches, and, you know whatever. And, um, and and so here, what we've got is these smaller scale, these multifamily that look like uh, houses, uh, two story um, uh, for the most part, and then uh, some three story. This building has uh, twelve units in it. Um, so it's three story, stories with four units on each floor. Um, and then you see, you know, these are the little parking uh, areas uh, for that, but the parking is kind of hidden in the rear. Have you considered maybe shifting that roof and putting Yeah, so one of the things that we were what we're trying to do is, you know, the, the main intersection there, you know, kind of making a place that entrance um, procession, if you will, uh, and this is, uh, you know, right up along along that or around the or along the main circulation, and so it seemed like um, having you know easier access to those uh, the street connections made a lot of sense, and then the other thing is that. The eight acre parcel here is actually already um, set up to uh, to drain to the lake uh, there as well, and so it kind of works together. It's really like, oh, that's great. We can already, you know, deal, deal with that. So, so that's why we did it. Um, I'm sorry, you and then you. Just very quickly, from the houses at the north end, the the two story buildings. Yeah. What is there? You've got greenery that would be planted along the white path is that what that is uh well this is the existing right, right. so that yeah. would remain there oh yeah okay yeah, and yeah. the distance from the houses to the bike path is roughly 100. this one of 100 i think this was 150 they're actually closer than i pulled them back yeah, um, so. Right. okay so there's 100 feet plus existing greenery which is I don't know. If I don't walk out from the bike path. Yeah. How, how tall is that? Uh, when we're standing out there looking, and I made the comment about the understory being important, it's, it was you know well over my head. Okay. Um, so okay. I had the sense that. Eight, six, feet. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so there is some yes. buffer. You and then you. So what's that for? Did that get some get some add in here? Swimming pools or a gym? I'm just trying to guess what you want to find out. Yeah, so the idea is right here to have um, a small club house area, of, you know, maybe a fitness center or something. I'm not sure kind of what amenities um, we have this sort of slated. So you, you see that when you come in, there's a, a small pool. I've been trying to to get them on board with that. idea. one of these natural pools. Have you seen that it looks like a pond, but you can swim in it, but, you know, kind of neat to do. Because um, it's right up, you know, by the, the wetlands area here. Um, and so the idea would be that, you know, all of the trails, boardwalks, the you know, parks, all that, those are the real amenity uh, as well. So, yes, ma'am. Going forward, beautiful. Uh, and all the way to here, they don't all have eight. Okay, they don't all have eight. Are no. the little ones down here fewer? The bigger ones that have eight? That has 12 in it. There's a mix. There's a mix. There's not a, no, not necessarily. If the other ones have less than eight, then that one has 12. Okay, keep, keep in mind. 
keep in mind, you're looking at five days worth of work, right? And I was up till 3.45 in the morning last night. So like, so we have counted, but I don't remember each of the specifics. What's better? Yes, Charles. That would be us. That's one of the beauties of living here is there, there is no HOA. There's a professional management company that would manage all this. The amenities would be enjoyed by single family homes as well as apartment residents. Is that an additional fee on top of the rent? It goes to the rent. And one of the things we're trying to figure out is the areas that we're you know, setting aside to preserve, you know, what's the best way to, you know, who's best at maintaining or managing those if you put them in a, you know, a conservation easement or whatever, so they're you know, set up in perpetuity and, you know, does the, is Bristol the best one or the city or, you know, to become a city park or we're not sure. We're just so early on thinking through that, but we've heard maybe that we don't want to be a city park necessarily. So, yes, sir. You, yes. Uh, one thing I noticed is that in the rendering, there's no description uh, of cars and parking spaces. Do you have something like that? Or you put one of the one blanks for vehicles occupying all those spaces? Yeah, so the, the way it's set up now is that, like, I'm sure you can't see from there, but like right here, you can see we've carved. I mean, normally we don't get to that level of detail, but we're so into we're trying to like get around, you know, saving that tree and all that. So uh, you can see there's some on street parking spaces here. This is all parking uh, here in the rear. You see this is parking. So all the parking is in in the rear. It's not intended to be seen. So when you're walking down, the street, unless there's on street parking in some areas, but we didn't want to put it everywhere. Like a lot of times we would, we put on both sides of the street. We wanted to minimize our impact and so the idea would be to have it kind of like from here to there and then have trees planted no you know between garage. uh what no yeah yeah this is this is the parking garage for this oh. but so these this is a garage for this building garage for that garages for that parking spaces for that so there's a mix so some people who you know if you want to uh, have a lower rent uh, and you don't want to rent to the garage you know maybe you have a an open parking space or whatever so yes all right. This is all happening so fast, I can't answer this question today. But let's just say very large. Okay. What do you see contributing back to the city for impact fees? Well, there, there's several contributions. It starts with impact fees that are paid for, for mobility and schools, um, utility access. Is this asphalt or is this going to be? Well, we would first annex into the city and go through the entitlement process in the city. And so everything would be in the city uh, once it's approved and we would pay city and county taxes and have city utilities. Yes. Sorry, I forgot you earlier. So, so what I'm seeing from your plan is that you're creating the rental space, but the people who work in Nassau County don't have the income for them to afford this. So you're not necessarily helping our young people stay on the island. My cousin graduated from college uh, from high school before the uh, fire school wants to be a fireman on the island, but she, she would start at about $17 an hour. So you're not creating anything to help the local people here. You are creating something like a veteran community for people to uh, go back and forth to the island. I don't see who would actually help us. If this was commercial, we would be getting the sales tax. We would be getting something to add to our model of being commercial in the city. And you're slowing down traffic. What, where, how will people get to the south end of the island? And you're talking about this road that could go possibly 100 years to 100 feet or there's a plan in the town to build a second bridge to go from the concourse onto the island. So it sounds like your plan is, is trying to mesh up with that, and that's not what we want as a community. We want our community to keep our children here, to keep the lower, to help people who are lower income and not the W community. So, 
Yes, Charles, you don't say For clarification, is that what your son said? Or your second? Your cousin. Um, the seventeen million dollars an hour that would not quite reach that forty-one thousand dollars a year. That's about that's twenty dollars an hour in pay. So after the first raise, you know, then they'd be close. So I understand. I mean, it's a, it's a problem everywhere, and we can't solve it by ourselves. So we have tried to do this to, to at least contribute to the solution. The other thing is, even at the market rate for people that don't qualify. Um, they had about fifty-five thousand dollars a year using the typical method for how much of your income can go to housing. People could afford a one-bedroom apartment, um, so it's not out of reach for everyone. But it is certainly mean, trained for teachers, firefighters, policemen, I like that. <laughs> I have another hand up first. You guys. Okay. Here's my question. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> Who's working with the trust to get them involved with the realistic value of this property? Therein lies the issue I perceive. You have a lot of development costs, a lot of waste of land. You did a marvelous job. You did all this. Fabulous. Been around my building for 40 years. <laughs> Property's not been developed because it's not a great piece of property. Good features about it. Uh, with the cost of development, get your ROI. It's like you have to have this density to get the cost down. You don't have to have that much density. So, you want to, you could, you yes, you want to go negotiate, negotiate for us to get the cost down. Right? Yeah, you got to cram that much, you know, on that little piece of property. Right? Well, there's, there's two things, too, you know, other factors that go into it. One is the wonderful, uh, requirements you all have for conservation and stuff and stormwater. So that also is sort of working against that affordability and low density and all. So it's it, it's weird, I know, but it's a good point. It's not lost. It's charge too much. That's That'd why be great. So you, going. oh, sorry, you, then you, then you. Yes. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, you know this community appraisal process that you have to Nobody has a certificate. They don't own anything. They only have to be here for a year. When they move in, they can't do it on their own, so they take in a room. So what we want, every two-bedroom apartment, every three-bedroom apartment, is going to have three or four cars. I have seen a ton of people have cars. Yeah, if we are over the couple, we're going to have two cars. Charles is correccting you if you're wrong. You don't allow people with too many sons? No, we don't allow someone to just bring in roommates and live in, you know, four people live in a two bedroom apartment. How many people can live in two bedroom apartments? Two adults. Two? Okay, so it's two cars. That's not one car. But that would be there too. And what if I have a kid? I'm a single mother, I have a teenage son, and a teenage daughter. Children can come. Children have cars. They go to high school. That's three cars. That would be. So there's a couple of things about it. So when it comes to parking, the you know cities, counties have requirements for what is a developer must do. They tend to um, be abstract sort of um, guesses of what they, people would like to see um, to make sure that no one calls and complains that we don't have parking. But when it comes to development, developers, especially those who are renting to tenants, um, care more than anyone about making sure that it's parked appropriately. And so parking is provided for people who are living there. Um, there are obviously, you know, worst case scenarios in which you could say, well, what if someone sneaks past your detection system and they have, you know, too many roommates or whatever. Um, but fortunately, you know, one of the things that you all have seen on their webpage that, you know, you said, oh, these buildings, we don't like this or that kind of development, but they're really good at running you know, multifamily developments. And so those systems are in place uh, to be dealt with. And so the parking is something, 
I would be more concerned about the traffic than the parking. I'm right. really Thank you. Yes. Oh, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> sure. Charles, you seem to have a good sense of timeline. From the city is that it can take about a year to go through their approval process. And um, that's right, if we're approved. And then, and, um, then it would take probably another six months to finish construction drawings in order to be able to start the site work. So if, if we're not ready to submit that we're going to be 18 months before we can start, and it's something that's magnitude we would do. So in the peach, and then up to you. That's not what we want to do. And if that is the option, then Bristol's not doing it. you had yelled at me then because that was a great question so what we're thinking is that the art trail actually peels into and comes through and is expanded and now comes up there which is super exciting to me um i think it'd be amazing you know but it will stay you leave the what you have right there, you okay. know? Yeah, but it's going to come right down the side yeah. there and cross the ip oh no you you come through yeah, yeah. Right now, it's like down, and you have to cross the street. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, currently. Right. Yeah. So, what right now you're talking about shop and all that. Yeah. I wonder what's happening to the arts trail. To the what? Arts trail. Yeah. So, I mean, it would all, I think it all stays, you know, as it is, but because it, it goes along there, there's a feature, but a lot of times, um, what you would see is as it comes through a village center like that, that, you know, maybe you do a different paving material or something. So it's not just an asphalt trail or whatever. So it comes in keeping with the character, but the idea would be that you would, you know, you'd still have it as it is in a sort of straight shot fashion, but you could, if you wanted, peel off and kind of go through the woodland version and whatever. So it's kind of, it's additive to it. So I told you about 10 minutes ago, I was going to come back to you, sorry. Um, so I want to reiterate just a couple of things that I think we have listened, but I think the, the chief raised all along has been no development. We solicited responses, and I think so much. Thank you. I want to go back a little bit to the traffic and tell visitors that as we're meeting here tonight, the county is meeting parking lot mobility. So they are looking at their plans for the prototypes and also looking at the hurricane restoration procedure. We're not hearing that tonight. I think we're here. We can't be. We have money to have our funds and we're saying to that. One of the things that we should keep in mind we have one of the worst evacuation groups in the state. Okay. And a lot of people don't know that. And it's not necessarily our fault that we waited to the last minute for us to make over the But I 
technically we can have a clear understanding of that concept, we can have a clear understanding that the city staff do kind of the job of trying to deal with all that. But a lot of what you're hearing is decisions that are being made that come and impact them. So I would ask you if you have some involvement here, please start looking at that point. Where are our county officials? They're not fine for that. You know where they are because you don't get down to the county. But that is critical. So when somebody says they're considering the bridge, you want to be on that county and you want to be really on board. It's like what it can be said or not. It's not a thing. No, it's going on because this. Information that the good model are being Yes, the salamander, yes, not the overpasses. So the, we hope to, you know, that the, that the road and the, and the environment there, the sort of more village-esque environment, will, you know, be created and designed such that if we're allowed to um, by the county and, and others, that it will be walkable, it won't be overpasses and things. Um, but the salamanders, yes, they're not very fast, so. They have, they have overpasses for wildlife. I've too. seen those. Some of them are incredible.
I'm sorry for you guys because I feel, and maybe there's not just a here, that we're probably going to take a breath in the discussion about a racetrack and a development, and then all of a sudden, and it's not that far from where I'm here. So that, you know, people are just starting to recover now. Here we are. Yes. Yeah, here we go again. Yeah. But I think it's great that you did the, the five days. You know, I could have done it. Thank you. I appreciate that. No, I'm sorry. Oh. But if you can pass the number, I know. Well, I, know. Well, I, know. Price I know. I told you I was really excited, but also really nervous to share with you tonight. So, especially uh, that eight acres is such a good Yeah, I mean, that's all the Charles Stewart thing. So, all right. So, um, Yes, ma'am. Right now, we can we get if this goes through with you people or the management. Yeah. Management. Well, but the what if this they're going to have own this property, but you're going to manage it. What happens when you die? Who, who's going to take over? Well, it's not me. Who is going to manage when you run out? Do you ever? That's when that place is going to run down. That doesn't happen. Because somebody owns it. Yes, somebody owns all. Somebody owns all of the buildings that are on it. That's us. And development at this scale, we will be required to hire professional management. There's, there's companies that manage um, projects like this all over the country. One in Jacksonville. Florida, we're just finishing. Um, and it's a big business, and the people who do that know how to do it extremely well. And the, their, their worldwide companies that do that sort of thing. Um, and so that's who will manage. We will hire them, and we being, if we're a company of. You go on, I'm going to be out of here. Here you go. <laughs> well, uh, I'm not far behind. What I. What I Really concerned about is you have you have an opening on Daily Road, that one closest to Alan Mark. Yeah. And somebody else can get us a bit. Why don't you put it in that the nature trail business is there? And that those buildings there at that end instead of we don't have that at Daily Road right now. So what are they going to do? No, we hear you. We understand. We got to, as we go, again, this is the beginning of the process for us. So we have to look into and study all that. Well, you know what? I'll share something with you. Did you know that people can, on average, walk about 20 years longer than they can drive? And so one of the reasons why communities like this are so desirable for people is that it's a walking community and you all already live nearby you can now have a center that you can walk to and you don't have to get in your car and drive so i'm not going to convince you right now yes yes ma'am appreciate it thank you so, all right so we have um stayed and stood here and i Taking all the darts and hand grenades and all that, as I said, I would. So thank you all so much for your participation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I told my friend when it was the first day, I said, this should be a rom com. <laughs> no, it's like, oh, you saw that cute young thing. It's like, oh, <laughs> and ends up falling for you. <laughs> Anyway, it's great. I like it. Except, yeah. I just think that we.
So I'm going to get out of here so I'm going to back up and go. <laughs> no, no, no. You all did just a, a fabulous job. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate you saying that. Particularly with you all don't all work together all the time. You came from different areas to come in and do this. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's, it's a nice stretch. 
Yeah. Do you just walk through your stuff or do you want to use a dog walk? Well, we are going to go over the new pound. John three cold weather dogs. We're coming in with their sweatpants during the summer. I think some of the volunteers from the main society do their walk the dogs. So I was wondering what the great time so you go to the you can go all the way to the river. Go all the way to the river. So you that little punish kind of stone you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. You walk out on a board walk out to the river and so I go all the way to the ocean. That's good. Cool. Cool. No, no, you actually before the gate there's a parking lot back in the woods. And it's the actual then there's a path you walk down that and you, you walk right by the there's a there's a sign there so you might come in here and you'll be shot on site <laughs> the police will be called so uh, you're walking right up to the line uh,
Thank you. 